Hey, this is Susan, and this is Van Tales Stories from the Road. You know, I've been getting a lot of questions from people about my van, and they want to see my van. And today, you're in luck, because that's exactly what I'm going to do. So it just uses this fastener here and there are some hooks on the top of the wall and it threads through on the base of the bed and just cinch it nice and tight and you know then I like to tuck this in so it's nice and pretty make it look a little bit nicer and so also we've got this piece here and this piece is independent and you can put this piece up and it will lock with the bed and then you have more space to walk around or you can leave it down and then you can also put a cushion here and that's a nice place to sit if you have extra people in the van and you have a the table set up so it's really nice or if you just want to do like a chaise lounge type thing you can use the larger or the longer cushion and lay down here read whatever Let's put it up though. So I'll put these cushions back on and these are great because they have Velcro and the, um, the opposing Velcro side is on the bench. So they're really nice and snug. So when you're going down the road, they don't fly off, which is a great little uh, bonus because when you live in a van, things shift and move around break. Yeah, if you don't have stuff secured, you're going to have some difficult times ahead. So these are nice and secure. I got a nice pillow, decorative pillow. Put that there. So before we get too much further, why don't we open up these doors and get some light in here? And in fact, I'll show you what I've got going on here. So I've got a curtain rod here and it's just a magnetic curtain rod. It'll pop on and off. Uh, and it's really great. I haven't had any problems with it. It doesn't budge. It doesn't move when I drive. I really like it a lot. And I just put these uh, sheer panels here because even though the windows are tinted, it just provides a little more privacy and I can open uh, this area here, take these covers off and the sunlight really streams in, which is a bonus in van life. Uh, it just makes the van seem a lot bigger. So these are actually um, made for the ProMaster, but you can get them for sprinters or, or uh, other vehicles for transits, for instance. And they have magnets in them, so they just um, go on and off really quickly. And so I really like these a lot. And I have one for each side, of course. When I'm not using them, I either stash them off to the side here, or I put them in one of the bins. And finally, I've got these cute little magnet flower thingies. And so sometimes what I'll do is I will just, you know, um, put these in place. And just if I want some more sunshine, I'll tie those off like that. So it works great. All right. And of course, you know, we can open the doors as well. Uh, right now in Portland, it's uh, it's not sunny at all. That's the bane of living in Portland. The, the weather's really temperate, but you don't get a lot of sun. Uh, so we'll leave those closed for now. It's still a little chilly outside. So since we're on this end of the van, maybe it's a good time to talk about the Webasto heater. Uh, I, I lovingly term it Wablasto because it really keeps me toasty. Uh, it runs off of the gas line from the van, but the van doesn't have to be turned on. And it's also automatically altitude adjusted. So if I go up to higher altitudes, it will automatically adjust, meaning it will not clog the fuel line and it will continue to work. So I can go snowboarding, I can go, um, you know, up into the higher climbs and I'm still gonna be super comfortable. Um, so let's take a look at it. Here's the thermostat. And the thermostat uh, is adjustable, it's programmable. Um, it's not showing uh, on the video right now, but it is 65 degrees and it's set for 54 degrees. So right now we don't need it on and I can um, turn this little knob and I can update 
of the temperature so I can make it warmer, cooler, just like you would in a regular house. All right, let's take a, a close up look of this Webasto. So here's the intake. And basically when you run the Webasto, you wanna make sure that that intake is uh, free of any materials so that it can properly uh, introduce air into the Webasto. And then of course, this is where the heat's going to come out. And this is a great little rotating vent here so I can have control over where the heat goes. It can go in the kitchen, come under the bed, uh, et cetera. And then there is a an exhaust on the outside of the van, and I'll show you that when we get outside. So I'm really happy with this Webasto. Uh, I've gone through the winter. I've been up to the mountain. It's been in the teens, and I've been really warm. Not a problem at all. So, uh, so yeah, that's how I stay warm in the winter, along with some blankets and my hot water bottle, and I've been really happy. Also in this bench is where I keep the legs for the table. Now, um, I'm not gonna put the table up quite yet because there's a few other things I want to show you, but I did want to mention that that's where they are stored. Okay, so we have a couple more benches here, um, but you will notice that I've got these brightly colored boxes on top of one of the benches, and you're probably saying, Susan, what are these boxes for? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> confession every house has a junk drawer it's not really a junk drawer but I do tend to put things in there to keep them out of sight to make things look a little more tidy one of them is for my electronics um, and one is for everything else so no I'm not going to show you what's in them <laughs> but these work great they do have a lid and they have velcro and so they work really nice and they don't go anywhere which is great Above them, we've got these awesome flower pots. And I don't know if you saw the episode with the 3D printer because these flower rings, when I got them, didn't work all that great. They were a little too big, right? They moved around. But my brother, what a great guy, 3D designed and 3D printed these rings to fit in there. And now they fit nice and perfect. Beautiful. The other great thing about these flower pot holders is that if you have people in the van, you can also put them up against the wall. So that's a little bit of a space saver too. I like them a lot. They've been working out really well. Okay. Not only is there storage in the bench seats, but there's storage all along this, this wall here, which is awesome. Now, uh, I think I've got like a food in this first one. I've got my toiletries here. So I'll have a bin in each uh, cabinet. Here I've got some clothes. And then um, each one has a function so I know exactly what's in each one. And I got, like I said, I got these really nice bins to hold everything. And that works really, really well. This is also storage area. There's also um, just various things in here. Um, as well as on the other side, these are both storage too. So let's take a look at those real quick because I think you're going to be interested in these. So this is where all the magic happens. This is uh, where the batteries are stored and this is where the charge controller is and all of the fuses. So let's start, oh, and then this spaghetti mess here, which is, you know, just an extra power cord and some other things that I keep there. So these are three 100 amp hour batteries. Um, so those batteries um, uh, store all the energy that's collected from the three solar panels that I have on the roof. I have three 115 watt solar panels. And I really haven't had any issue with running out of battery power. Uh, there's also a charge when you are running the van. So the alternator will charge the batteries as well, which is great, especially when you live in an area that isn't really heavy on sun, like the Pacific Northwest. So this is my fuse box um, and basically just like you would have a fuse box in your house, everything is labeled here. So I have the USB bench, the heater, that the heater that I just showed you, the fridge, 
you know, the fans, etc. And so they just take fuses like your car would take. Um, yes, I do have one out and there's a reason for that. I'm working on, on getting that fixed. That is the um, fan for my composting toilets, which I'll show you momentarily. And this panel here is for all of the AC power. And that is going to be the alternating current. That's what you would typically see in your house where you have a three pronged um, outlet. And so this is things for the microwave, the kitchen, um, some of the plugins and the bench. Um, so I have USB ports and I also have regular AC ports as well. So here on the bench, we've got the AC power which is typically what you're going to have in your house. And then this is the DC power, the direct current. And uh, that's just my USB, etc. So yeah. Granted, most of the time I use the, um, the USB ports to charge all of my electronics, but uh, I do have to use the three prong outlets to charge my laptops, for instance. So, um, so it's great having both. You gotta have both. Uh, also, again, like the microwave runs off of that, so that three-pronged, so you have to, you know, if you want to use your microwave, that's the best way to do it. One other thing that I have down here that you might have noticed is another panel, and it is a carbon monoxide and propane gas detector, which is really important. So, yeah, that um, that's housed right here, and right now, as you can see, the light is green. We're looking good. So I did opt for propane in the van as opposed to an induction stove. And part of the reason that I chose propane was because I was worried at the time that I wouldn't have enough battery to operate the induction stove when I needed to, especially since I was living in a place where there wasn't consistent amounts of sun. So uh, now that I've gone through uh, the winter and i am um, come through the other side and it's springtime, I have realized that I really do have enough battery. I could have gone with an induction. And I think if I had to do it over again, I probably would do that uh, because I believe that it's going to come in handy, especially if I decide to travel outside of the country because some of the, um, some of the connections and the canisters are different in other countries. And from what I've read, it can be a little difficult to find the correct attachments, etc., when you're traveling outside of the US. So the propane tank is right underneath the sink. And this is a one pound propane tank. It really does last quite a while. I normally have to fill it up about every month, month and a half. Depends on how much you're gonna be cooking. I've also got a bin here of cleaning supplies and other things, and that fits nicely underneath of the sink area. Let me move that out of the way. Underneath the propane tank on the floor is this blue bin. And basically this is the receptacle for my gray water, the water that uh, I use in the sink. And uh, that actually has to be dumped periodically. I would say I dump that tank about every three weeks. I'm really uh, conservative about my water use, so uh, others might have to dump it a little more frequently, but I also uh, don't feel uh, guilt when I'm dumping it either because I do use uh, Castile soap. I don't have uh, any kind of chemicals in there, so, so that's also really nice. So if you can, that's also a great option, good for the environment. Now the water tank itself is underneath the microwave cabinet. So the microwave's up here. There's another storage bin here. And then you have the water tank. The water tank is a 28 gallon water tank. Uh, it is filled externally. And then this is the water pump, which then of course pumps that water to the sink area. I also have a water filter underneath the sink so that I don't have any problem uh, with drinking water. Uh, tastes delicious. And most of the water that I filled up in the van has either been at a campground or there's some great natural springs uh, in Oregon here where the water comes straight down from the mountain, which is awesome. The sink is really nice. 
Um, I did put this uh, soap dispenser in after I got the van and it works great and you can even fill it from the top so it's really easy, really convenient. And uh, this water faucet also is retractable, it's great. Um, when you turn it on you can also press this button and so that will stop the water and if you let it go it will turn on of course. So that's been really great. Also, another feature is um, instead of coming out in a stream, you can also have like a spray type situation, which is really great. I did not opt for hot water in the van. So you can get hot water in the van. What I was told is that in order to get hot water in the van, you need to leave the van on and running or have just turned it off and really the only reason that I would have hot water in the van or need hot water is if I had a shower. I did not get a shower. I'm rethinking that decision every day uh, during the pandemic especially, but now things are starting to open up and it's really not an issue at all. Um, but so I don't have hot water and I've been making out just fine without it, but that might be something that you might want to think about if you're you know, going to be building a van or getting into van life. So we're in the kitchen. We talked about the water. We talked about um, the gray water tank and the propane and the stove. But what about the fridge? Because, you know, I got to keep my beer in there. I got to keep my food, my peanut butter and jelly. So yes, I do have a fridge in the van. Not only do I have a fridge, but I also have a freezer. Let's take a look. Okay, so my fridge sits underneath the stove here and um, let's open that up. There's quite a bit of room in here um, and I don't, as you can see, I need to go grocery shopping. Um, so it's a little empty right now. And up here though is where we have the freezer. So there's some ice cubes, some veggie dogs, and I think some hot dog buns. All right. This works really great. There's a control on the side here and you can make it colder, warmer, whatever. Um, I keep it uh, pretty much mid-level and haven't had any problem. One thing I will caution you is I feel like the fridge is probably the biggest drain on my battery in the summer months. Uh, it comes on quite a bit and that makes complete sense. Uh, so you may want to turn it down a little bit in the summer if you're having trouble keeping up with your battery demands. But uh, really when it comes down to it, again, I really haven't had too much of a problem with it and I'm really pleased with my solar setup. It's worked out really well. Right above the fridge, uh, again, is the, the plugs, my USB ports and my AC outlets. And then of course, this is my drawer with all of my utensils, etc. cetera. Um, these are great. I love these. They're little wine stoppers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Down here uh, is my trash can. And you know, I just um, implemented this yesterday. So I put some uh, Velcro on, on this corner and it attaches to the wall here. It's only been a day, so I don't know if it's gonna work yet or not. Uh, if it does end up working and it holds snug, then I'll probably upgrade and get uh, a lid um, to this and, and go from there. But it's really nice to have a place to, to keep your trash and keep things clean. You also notice above the trash can, um, this setup here, this is actually um, part of the countertop and it's collapsible. So if you have um, people coming in and out of the van, they're using the sliding doors, or if you just want some more room, uh, you can put this down. And then you have some more room to walk in and out of the van, etc. So that works really great. I've also got these curtains here, which are fantastic. And let me tell you about these curtains. They're blackout curtains. These blackout curtains, in combination with the covers I have for the back windows, do not let any light escape. So I could be urban camping and people don't even know that I'm in the van. 
it's great. Not only does it keep the light inside the van, but when I'm ready to sleep, it keeps uh, any light from entering the van too, so it's nice and dark in here. I love it. Now, on top of that, I decided to get uh, one sheer panel to put in the middle. So again, if I'm parked somewhere, and it's a beautiful day and I just want to open the van up, I can open up that sheer panel but still have some privacy so it works really well. I just have a regular uh, curtain rod here and then I just pull this over and then you've got some really nice uh, sunshine coming in uh, on a sunny day that is. So that works really well and it really opens up the van. I also have additional room uh, here underneath the microwave. And this is where I keep all of my pots and pans and spices and mugs, etc. So that works really great. And then also up top, this is where I keep my uh, coffee, hot chocolates, tea, uh, some uh, plates and whatnot, but also my fire extinguisher in the back, which is really important. You never know if you might need that, so it's good to have. And it's really nice to come through the side sliding door and, and say, oh, welcome home, okay. The other thing that we have in the kitchen are all the controls. Up above, there's a beautiful portrait from my nephew, thank you. <laughs> we have all the lights, so this is for the front um, portion of the van where I cook, etc. This one is for the um, bed bedroom area, and these are also in dimmers, which are really great, so they can go up and down. This is the water pump. Also, this is a really, really great feature. I'm so glad I got this. This is for the cell booster. The cell booster is mounted outside uh, the, on the van, on the roof of the van. And when I turn that on, it increases the signal so that I can get better reception when I'm on my phone. And I actually use my phone to tether the internet. So that's how I get internet in the van. I actually use my phone as a hotspot. And so that works really great. And I can get normally at least one bar, if not two, when I use a cell booster. And I absolutely love it. The other thing that we have in the van is the, uh, the battery monitor. This is the Victron Energy and then the Xantrex. And I won't go into detail on those, but basically that's to, um, to see how much battery life you have, how many watts you have available. And the, um, the Xantrex will actually tell you when you're on bypass power, for instance, if you go to a campsite and you plug in, it, it will tell you there that you're on bypass. It'll also give you a good overview of, um, of all the energy you're consuming, etc. So there's also apps for your phone that you can download and you can also look at, uh, you know, use the apps to monitor all of your systems as well. Now, one of the things I'm really excited to, to show you today is my pig. This is my pig toothbrush holder. Yeah, it's it's a little things in life. It opens up and it, there's my toothbrush. Just close that pig up. There you go. <laughs> I also have some fruit here and I just have like a little command strip that I use for that, including the book light. So this book light is just, it's just a, a clip on book light. I put it up here to keep it out of the way when I'm not using it, but it's great because when I'm in bed for the night and I'm reading, I don't want to get up and when I'm tired to turn off the lights, I can just flip off my book light. I'm lazy like that. Okay, I mentioned something about a table. Let's put the table up. You can check that out. The table legs again get stored in this cabinet. They get tucked away there. And then the table itself actually slides in the side here. So that just kind of comes out a little bit at a time. So we'll put the legs on first and then I'll come back for the table. I just tighten it up. do my video editing, play games, do whatever. So it works out really well. So I've got the Wabasto, Wablasto 
that keeps me warm in the winter but I uh, I also need to keep cool in the summer and I do that by using max air fans now normally you'll see one max air fan on a van sometimes you'll see two I have two and I highly highly recommend getting two and the reason for that is that I put one on intake and one on exhaust and when I do that I get a nice breeze that comes through the van and really circulates the air and it works great this one is at the rear of the van and you know you have some controls here if you're not familiar with uh, max air fans this is the in and out so you can change the direction of the van this is auto if you want it to come on uh, when a certain degree is met and uh, you can also open it and close it if you turn it on and off here you can also ah, I'm already getting a nice breeze that's great and so I'm gonna turn that off right now just by clicking the same button And it closes up sometimes you don't really need the fan or you just need one fan and you just uh, need to have an opening so that that air will draw from so sometimes I'll just open the fan without actually turning it on and you can do that manually with this uh, knob here and so it just opens the fan casing so there you go the other fan I have placed strategically right above my cooking area. And that is a great place for it. Because let me tell you, if you're in the city and you're trying to be stealthy, nothing is worse than the smoke detector going off. So I normally uh, turn this fan on low and it's just going to, uh, to vent out any of the cooking fumes or smoke or anything else that might happen. Works great. So while i might not have a shower i refuse to not have a toilet so yes i do have a toilet in the van i would not give this thing up for anything i can't imagine how people don't have a toilet or some means to go to the bathroom in the van because what happens in the middle of the night when you gotta go you have to drive around and find a place that's open and i'm sure that that was super difficult during covid so Yes, I do have a toilet. I have a nature's head composting toilet and it's tucked away here underneath the octopus here that holds my keys and, you know, Dumbledore and Snape, of course. Uh, and there you go. That cabinet just pops up and there is my toilet. Now I also have a trash can here and I've got uh, my recycle bin, etc. And then this just pops up. There's my toilet. Um, so I won't go into a lot of detail on the toilet, but basically this is a two tank system. This uh, portion here opens up with this handle over here on the right. And that is where the solid wastes go. And then there's a diverter when this is closed uh, and then the urine will collect here in the liquid container. Now, uh, I do have a backup liquid container. If you have a nature's head composting toilet, get that backup liquid container. I can't recommend that enough because the only thing worse than not having a toilet in your van is not being able to use the toilet in your van. So if you wake up in the middle of the night and you realize that the liquid container is full, you can switch it out real quick and you're good to go. If you don't have that backup container, you're out of luck. So I think I've shown you most of the things inside the van. Let's take a quick peek outside the van. Uh, so one of the first things I'll show you is the drawer that pulls out from the base of the bench. And basically, it's pretty standard on a lot of vans. It's a great idea because if that bench is not accessible, if the bed's down or someone's seated there, you can still access the contents inside. So let's take a quick peek. Yeah, so I've got, for instance, my camel back here, my climbing shoes, my chalk bags under there. And I've got some, some tools. So that works out really well, and I like it a lot. Also, while we're here, 
I also have another bank of USB and three prong outlets. And then this is also a fan that helps keep my inverter cool in the summer. So this right here is the exhaust to the heater to the Webasto. So if you ever see that on a van, that's exactly what that is. And then the final thing I wanted to show you is where the water tank is accessed, where I fill up my water tank. And there's a key here. And we'll open that panel. And then, you know, water only. Don't put any gas in here, that would be bad. And then this just pops open and the water goes there. Now I did buy one accessory for filling the water tank and that is um, this extension to the hose. And basically what it is, is it allows you to turn uh, the water on and off so you don't overfill or you just don't want water splashing around when you're uh, trying to get the hose in and out of the water receptacle. And the other thing is this great little indicator light here. When the water reaches a certain level, that indicator light will come on and that's your, that's your signal to shut it off. No more water. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed this tour of the Samwise Vanjie. I had a great time and I hope that uh, van lifers out there that are researching builds found maybe a thing or two that might be of use or might be helpful to you in your search for your van build. And for those people that are just curious about van life, I hope you found the episode interesting or entertaining. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Uh, I'd also like to extend an invitation to join me for upcoming coming episodes, which drop Tuesdays and Fridays each week because I've got big news, friends. Today is the day that I leave Oregon and I'm setting off cross country on a different type of van tour. So I don't know where the road's going to take me, but I'm going to have fun. I'm going to get out there and do some grand adventures. And I hope you'll join me for that. I'd love to have you along. So please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of that. Okay, I'm going to let you get back to the rest of your day. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week too. Take care. We'll see you down the road. Bye-bye.